some textiles here. This time we are going back to the old world of wines. We're in France again. This particular wine is a long way off. The grape Pig Pool is a very ancient French grape. Only seven pounds. I would go on to say that Languedoc is now producing a third, a third of all French wine that's made. Got some pork just going in now. You were saying you don't want the oil too hot, didn't you? No, that's right. Cheese. Cheese on top as well. Just going to add the tomato now. Okay, so we are now adding some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Yep. Oh, oh my goodness. That's what I say time and time again. It's as simple as that. Delicious. Oh, I can't wait to dig in. Let's see. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre and this is my husband Rico. Rico is here to do another one of his wine and feud. Feud? 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 We do have a few feuds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I thought you said we never argue. We don't. We have feuds. <laughs> Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre. This is Rico, my husband, and he is here to do another one of his wine reviews and cook up another delicious recipe. Before we get into that, I invite you to subscribe if you're not already and whilst you're there press the notification bell which will notify you every time we upload a video. On that note, cheers and I'll hand you over to Rico. Well, welcome back again and this time we are going back to the old world of wines. We're in France again and this particular wine is a long way dock which is a region in the south of France that stretches from Provence all the way westward to the Pyrenees and the Spanish border. This wine is Pitbull, Pitbull de Pinay. Oh, this was one of the ones we had um, when we were yeah. doing our fine dining. Correct. This was the first wine we had. We had it with uh, crab. Right, okay. The crab course, the first, very first wine. The grape Pitbull is a very ancient French grape. Uh, it's derived from the Folie Blanc, which was a grape that was used to make Armagnac and Cognac. And it has flourished in Languedoc. The wine itself is 12.5% volume. It's a screw cap. On it it says it's on the nose. It's very aromatic. Notes of Granny Smith and white flowers and on the palate it says it's crisp and fresh with a real length and elegance that goes perfectly with fish and shellfish but we're having none of those things today just a little bit more about Languedoc itself Pigbill de Pinay did not receive an appellation the origin of production or AOC until 2013 and it has only in recent years flourished and been noted as a quality white wine. And we had it that night, as Andrew said, when we went to our fine dining experience at Cross Baskets, and, and I really enjoyed it that night. And since then, I have bought another pit pool and enjoyed that as well. So today, when I was out, I noticed this in the supermarket, and it was only seven pounds. Do you remember what they were charging? Or was that for, for a glass? No, it wasn't by the glass. It was, so, so it was all part of it. Right, but, okay. But I, I also did a wee bit of research on, on the price range of, of Pig Pool, and this, they, they really vary from £6 to about £13. Pounds. So, and I think you're getting a lot of wine for that money. I think they're, they're very good. 
Is this exactly the same as the one we? It's not exactly the same. Right. It's the same pit bull de pinny. It's pit bulls of great pinny. Right. Okay. It's a part of a uh, long I, I would go on to say that long Dock has now is now producing a third, a third of all French wine that's made. Now that's a staggering statistic when you think about Bordeaux, Burgundy, Rhone, the Loire Valley, Alsace, and this area produces a third of all of France's wines. And I really have never known Languedoc wines until maybe the last year I started noticing Languedoc, Languedoc, this word Languedoc coming up when you walk down an aisle and you go into a wine shop. And I've had a few and I've never been disappointed to be very honest, I've had a couple of reds but mostly whites and I've never been disappointed. Nice blends of grapes, nice wines and at a good price, a lot less than the Bordeaux's and the Loire's and, and the Burgundy's. This is a blend of grapes? No, it's a pig, pig pool, it's a single one, this one's a single one. Alright, which is a third, yes. right, okay. Uh, th this one's a single, it's a pig pool de Pinay, pig pool's the grape. Right. Okay. okay. And it's an ancient French rape, as I said. Okay. Anyway, I've decided to pair this wine with this meal today. We're going to call this meal a pork valdostana. Valdostana is an Italian uh, meal. Uh, the sort of original valdostanas were mainly veal and they sort of maybe on a pork chop, they sliced the pork chop and filled it with a, a specific cheese and then pan fried it and grilled it and maybe finished it in the oven. Filled uh, it so it was a, like a cordon bleu type yeah, but thing? Yeah, it, it was just cheese mainly right, okay. and then in some regions maybe they added a bit of ham and this and that and there were various variations depending on which part of Italy you come from. But that happens with a lot of dishes, yes. there's always variations and on I a dish. When Valdostana came to the UK it changed again and other things came for faster cooking and, and whatever. I'm going to add here, any Italians, please do not <laughs> criticise us for calling this Valdostana. It's just, as Rico said, a variation on it, okay? <laughs> just thought I'd add that. Because I know with a lot of our Greek dishes as well, you get a lot of variations on the actual recipe, the actual ingredients. And then if you cook something a certain way, somebody says, oh, no, that's not how you make such and such. But with all recipes, there's always a variation. And in all households, you'll have your specific recipe. Wouldn't you agree? That's Everybody right. has a specific, specific recipe that you were brought up with. So anyway, so this is basically a pork with a cheese. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. That's okay. what call it, yeah. A bit of tomato. Right, let's do the ingredients. Right. We've got some pork fillet here, which I've hammered into thin slices. So they're really quite thin. thin. Yep. This is Italian prosciutto. Okay. Nice thinly sliced ham. So is that like parma ham? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've got some edam here. I could just start nibbling at these now. You could. <laughs> right, okay. Sliced edam here. We're going to have this with some munch to, broccoli and some potatoes. So this doesn't look like your normal broccoli, so this is? Tender stem broccoli. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And of course I've had to peel all the wee leaves off because Andrew doesn't like any leaves <laughs> left on the broccoli. So, and we've got some potatoes here which I'm going to quickly boil off and then we're going to cut them and just sort them off with some butter. Right, we'll show how that's done yeah. as well. So basically you're just yeah. going to boil those potatoes now yeah. until they're cooked. Correct. Just just before they're cooked, there's a little bit of firmness in them now. I'm going to slice them and, and pan fry them in, in the butter. We're going to add some passata to our dish, some thyme, salt and pepper, some cream, and that's basically it. Okay, so first of all, we're going to get these We're potatoes. going to get these potatoes on the go. We're going to use our AMC cookware. I'll put them now over here. So I'll just give the potatoes a good wash again, soaking. And again, we are not going to fill this with water because you don't need to with the AMC cookware. They just need to be kind of dripping wet, basically. Right, so I'm just going to put, put the lid on. There we go. 
So what you do with this cookware is put it on a high heat yep. and once the lid, because these are really the original ones, the new ones had a temperature gauge here. So like I said before, these are about 37 years old, aren't they? Yep. If not more. My mum actually bought them even before we were married, so they're even older than that. They're the kind of first generation. Anyway, so it's a high heat and the way we do it is once the lid becomes warm to hot, you turn it down. To the touch, we just turn it down to a low heat and that will boil the potatoes. But of course you would just boil them in water as you boil anything else. So the veg is simply going to be put into a microwave and just microwave the veg and it's just the simplicity of that because there's a lot going on with everything else, with the cream, the cheese, the ham and the sauté potatoes. So these are just going to be simply done in the microwave. So while Rico's doing that, I thought I'd taste the cheese and the parma ham. Mm. It's not parma ham, it's prosciutto. Prosciutto. Parma ham only comes from parma. Okay, parma ham only comes from parma, Rico says. So we're just checking the potatoes now. Ooh, steam. Proof there is no water in there. Oh, they're definitely cooked. Yep. You can see that. So, I'll just take that off. Putting them in a colander. Steaming, steaming my camera. All right, so you're running yeah. cold water yeah. on them. Yeah. That's just stop them from. Yeah, just stop, stop the cooking process. It's still hot in the middle. Okay. Okay. Is that a hot pan? No. Not yet. Not yet. It's warming up. Pan's warming up. Just adding some cooking oil. You're just using sunflower oil. I'm just going to heat the oil up and Lily's making sure we're doing everything correctly, aren't you? I couldn't resist. So whilst the oil is warming up, Rico's just getting the potatoes ready, just slicing them. That's the pork just going in now. You were saying you don't want the oil too hot, didn't you? No, that's right. You're just browning them now? Yep. Yeah. Adding some salt. There we go. Pepper. And pepper. I'm going to turn them over now. Here. And they won't take any time at all will they? Just too thin. Just come on. I'm going to take these out and put the other three in and then put them all in the pan together. Okay. This is the idea, okay? Just let them keep on a little bit. So you're turning them over again? Yep. Yeah. So it's the first one browned. Are they cooked or are they browned, Rico? They're half, the part, they're halfway. Okay, they're browned. They're browned, okay. okay. Let's put in these now as well. So just doing the same again yep. with the next batch. Yep. Just turning them over again. Okay, just adding the first batch back into the pan. And any juice. Just adding some thyme. Just dry thyme. Okay, dry thyme. We all need a bit of thyme in our lives. Now we're going to add the pan ham or the prosciutto. So just adding the prosciutto or pan ham, whatever your choice it is. Just So will that cook on top? Well, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not raw, it's just to heat it up. Right, okay. okay. And cheese. Cheese on top as well. So that's the cheese now, all on the pork. Just adding some wine. Why would you say added there? Mm, 
three tablespoons. Three tablespoons of wine. You see the cheese is now starting to melt. So are you lowering the heat just yeah. now? Yep, so that's the heat being lowered. See all the nice juices in there. I'm going to add the tomato now. Wine's just about the wine just down a little bit more. So just reducing the wine before adding the tomato. Just going to add the tomato now. Some cream. I'm going to put the lid on this and I'm going to take it off the heat and saute up the potatoes and by then that should be ready for serving. Okay. So by then all that would have all blended in together. Correct. The cheese, the yep. tomato, the wine, and, and it's also going to let the tomato cook off yep. and everything. So now to the potatoes. So this is not actually sitting on any heat, but this pot is keeping in the heat anyway. So that's allowing all that to happen. Just melting some butter in the frying pan just now for the potatoes. Shake, giving it a wee shake there. Butter melted. Just adding the. Put them all in. Okay. Okay. Just adding the sliced potatoes. some salt some pepper and we'll put a few vine mixed herbs on there as well just some mixed herbs okay I'll just let them fry up a wee bit we'll turn them over a wee bit and then we'll add a wee splash of the uh, Worcestershire sauce. So Rico's just put the potatoes in with the salt and pepper and hasn't turned them as yet. So you're leaving them fry out for a couple yeah. of minutes before yep. you even turn them. I know it's really tempting to go in with the spoon and start kind of doing that, but you don't want to do that to break yeah. them up. So that's the potatoes just now getting a stir. How long would you say? Just a couple of minutes? Well, a couple of minutes. Till, till I turned them? Yeah. It was about three or four minutes. A couple of minutes in that side and take them off. Come on, get the butter. Okay, so we are now adding the Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Yep. Liam pairings. Oh my goodness, these look delicious. Mm. Mm. Right, and they uh, smell delicious. Let's serve. Let's serve. Veg, just out the microwave, just salt, pepper, and a wee bit of olive oil yep. on there. Yep. yep. Goodness. That's what I say time and time again. It's as simple as that. There you go, honey. Mmm. Delicious. Oh, I can't wait to dig in. So we have the pig pool de pinet. It's been chilled and, uh, oh. Put some tasters here. Okay, here goes. I it says about green apple and floral notes smell a bit of citrus as well in there and the actual grape is quite an acidic grape but 
Let's see. Lovely, dry, crisp, clean. And I think it's going to be the business with this because of the cheese in here. I know that they say it should go with shellfish and fish and things like that. But I think it's that type of wine that's got that. It's got acidity and it's going to go cut this cheese, the, the ham, the tomato, the cream sauce. This will handle that well. You're, you're going to try the wine. Okay, so I'm going to try my wine first, which is what you said I have to do. It smells good. Do you see an apple or anything from it? Floral notes? Oh, see, I struggle with smelling fruits. I'm not getting apples, I'm not getting fruits. I'm getting a nice, smooth, white wine. Do you think it's citrusy? No, not at, at all. the finish. No, no, okay. not at all. The groaning, by the way, was say the dog, Lily. Lily. Not getting citrusy at all. Okay. But it's absolutely delicious. It really is. Right. Let me try. This looks amazing, Rico. It really does. You never tried yours, did Not you? Not yet, no. Mm. Delicious potatoes. Mm. So good. And you're right, it goes perfectly with this. Absolutely delicious. Good. So, cheers. And we'll catch you next time. Bye!